Hi guys. As you can see, we're back to the good old trusty board for this one. This video is, I'm just answering, I'm trying to show a gentleman who asked me a question about the Gold Coast Reefs. He's, he's new up here, he doesn't really understand the 18s, 24s and how it all works. And I can see how it can be a little confusing if you're new and not understanding. So this video basically is just going to be on how our reef system works and runs. And it's going to be more for the tourists coming up for holidays and the people that are new and moved here and want to learn the reefs. It's just, just a bit of a guide to help them out. Okay, so a lot of you guys who follow my channel and know me probably know most of this stuff. But this is for the newbies out there. Anyway, um, what we're going to talk about today is the reefs and which way they run, what basic fish you catch on these reefs roughly where they are and I'll even talk about the wind directions because people get a bit confused on the wind over especially over summer and what it does to the waters out here okay so let's get into it guys first of all you probably had a bit of a look at the chart You've got north south east and west you know north is not quite straight up it's out to sea a bit okay most guys know it we have the seaway here my little dodgy picture I've got the seaway that's our land then over this corner here, we've got the, like the pin bar. This green box in here with GC, so that's a green zone. That'll be on your Navionics charts and most of your new sounders will have that. And just north of the pin bar, there's also a green zone, which will, which will also be on your Navionics. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll start off with, talk about the reefs. The northeast, I mean, the reefs off the Gold Coast, so we've got the 50 fathoms, 36s, I'm only starting on the 36s because once again, this is for the guys on holidays and new to the area. Most people have got small boats, so up to five meters. So we'll start, with, we'll just, I just went to the 36s because most boats can go out to the 36 and in the close reefs. We might have to do the 50s and out wide on another day. So we'll start off. Even the 50s, 50s, 36s, 24s all run basically north to south or pretty much north to south, okay? The 24s start just Basically, uh, they start just off the seaway and run south. And it's not continuous reef, it is broken ground. So you'll have a bit of a chunk and then flat bottom, a bit of a chunk and flat bottom, little little lumps and pinnacles and rocks, but you're not gonna get big two meter ledges, three meter ledges. You very rarely find that off the coast. Most of it's just hard bottom with occasional meter ledge and like little rocks and bumps occasionally you'll come across. But anyway, the third, um, so the 24s basically start off the seaway running south. Inside that we've got the 18 fathom marks. And before, yeah, this is something the guy got confused with. Like we've got 12 fathoms, 18 fathoms, 24s, 36s. That's what we call our reefs. But it's not actually that in the depth. The 18 fathoms aren't actually 18 fathoms. So don't go out straight to 18 fathoms on your sounder because you're probably not going to find much. It's just a name. So 18 fathoms, basically, we're looking 30, 35 metres of water, depending on what part of the reef and what you find. Okay, the 24 fathoms up here is usually around 45 to 50 metres in depth. The 36 fathoms, I've got 70 to 75 metres, but 70 to 80 metres, basically, depending on what part of the reef you're fishing on. Okay, so the 18s, 24s, and stuff, that's just names. These are the depths, 30, 35, 40, 50, 70, 75. They're actual the depths. 12 fathoms is our bait grounds. That's in close. That's in about 15 metres or so. Maybe 20, depending on if you're going over here to the one mile or you're just the one off the seaway, off the sand pump and jetty. Okay, um, so that bit's out of the way. So most of the reefs run north to south and it's broken ground. It's like you'll get a clump here, a bit of a... It's not continuous reef, guys. So don't go out at the 24s and run down thinking you'll get reef all the way. You won't. You'll see reef, sand, whatever. It's broken reef. Goes to the 36s, goes to the 50s. Okay, 24s, it's broken reef. Um, 18s as well. 18s start basically just south of the seaway, touch south of the seaway. You've got the 18s around 30, 35 metres. That's broken ground, but that's really quite a big area. Okay, that's a good one for the smaller boats and tinnies. And you've got the bait grounds, obviously. What I'm going to do, I haven't got GPS marks on here, but I am going to put a link in the description to my, I've got a page of GPS marks, 50 marks. 
And on those pages, you all have the bait grounds and the good 18 fathoms and 24s and 36s. So I've got a heap of marks. They are proper good marks. So just put them in your GPSs and you'll have plenty of spots to go you know, start off your fishing on the Gold Coast. Um, so what I've done, we've got here, what the seaway, right? Yeah, the seaway. The first, most people go to the bait reefs here. Uh, but I like to go north occasionally into a wreck. There's a wreck there called the Aquarius. That's in, in this list of marks. It's called the Aquarius. It's an re old wreck. Good spot for bait. And over summer, we did get some good Spanish mackerel there and spotties at times. So it's a good mackerel spot as well. Um, a couple of k's out from that, we've got what we call the artificial blocks off the Gold Coast. I've got them on my GPS list. They're called blocks one, two, three, and four. You'll find them. They're actual blocks. Also a great place to get bait, and it's also a top dewy spot. Mainly over winter, but we do get them over summer as well. Also, not far from the seaway, so an easy run to a small boat. Okay, um, and you can see here I've got a, a basically a list of fish as I put down. But depending on water, colour, yeah, temperature, these fish will move around. Like you won't just get these fish on these reefs. They are fish, they do move around. I've just put down what we mainly catch on the reefs. But we will get king, uh, like wahoo or mahi mahi in close if you get the right weather. And marlin right at the back of the surf. They're not always just out there. So, just, okay, I'll just put down the main fish. So the blocks is mainly bait and jute, but at times you can catch cobia. And we have caught mackerel there over summer at times. The green bit here is a green zone, which like I said before, it's on your, beyond your charts. Um, off the pin bar, this is as far north as I've gone. I've just put in there, there's a little wreck. That's called the Dragon, very famous wreck. Uh, good spot for uh, get get bait. And over the winter month, the top dewy spot and of course some monster cobia are off it, big cobia. And unfortunately a lot of sharks, a good shark spot. Okay, so we've got the Dragon, the Aquarius. Down here, this is um, the Scottish Prince. I don't think I've got the mark for that, but it's called the Scottish Prince. That's on the GPS's anyway on Navionix. And it's inside the shark nets and a good spot to go get bait. And I have got a few friends that do catch some big dew there at times as well. Apart from that, we've got the bait grounds. So this is just off the sand pump and jetty in 12 fathoms. It's just called bait grounds on the list of marks. And south of that's one mile. You'll see boats occasionally out here. Also a good bait ground. But over summer, good spot to find a few mackerel. And here as well. And over winter, we do get a few dews and coves here. Okay. And that's quite shallow. That's like 20 metres or something. It's not that far out. Like it's only about 20 metres or something off the blocks, 20, 22 metres, and so will this reef here. So it's not very deep. Then my, some of my favourite grounds, as most of you know, I spend most of my time is around the 18s and 30, 35 metres. Broken ground, in the list of GPS marks I've, I'll put in the description, there's, look for numbers like, there's number 17, that's a good dewy spot and mackerel over summer. There's hook bender, great for snapper, great dewy spot, great for mackerel over summer. Um, and all these spots around here over winter when the whales are around, good for cobes, good, good cobia grounds. Okay. And then we've got the 24s up here, which probably 90% of the boats out here, they go to the 24s and around 40, 45 metres of water. Okay. And they're probably the main grounds for snapper, we do get a lot of mackerel over summer. A few dew, but I'll find more dew on a closer reefs. Cobia, definitely, and a lot of marlin over summer if you get the right water, which I'll explain shortly with the wind. Okay, so the 24s, and once again, that starts basically off the seaway, and they run south, breaking ground. And in the, once again, list of marks, I'll have 20, a lot of 24 fathom marks. You'll see marks for snapper and dew and 24s, and they're just marks along there. Put them all in. They're all good reef and somewhere to go start fishing. And I've got there like snapper, a dew, cove, all that. Then you've got the 36 fathom marks. This is a further, I've, I've taken this one because this is more for, like I said, the tourists and the small boats they bring up. So 36 fathoms, it's still 75 metres of water and it's a few k's offshore. It's a bit of a run, deep. But over summer, where if the water's quite cold and green and close, you head out here and if you can find blue water, it's a great spot for trawling for mahi and wahoo. Okay, Mahi and Mahu start off 36s and then you head out from there to the 50s and towards the shelf to find blue water for those two, but over summer you get quite a few of these fish. Marlin, the little blacks, will come right into the back of the surf. They'll be all through these reefs everywhere. And don't worry if the water's cold and green, the little blacks don't mind it. They really don't. 
Um, over winter on a 36, is it a main, probably a, a main ground for snapper. A lot of snapper fishermen head out there to float line for snapper. And we do put liveys down here as well. We do get good cobia and kingfish at times too. Okay. And once again, there's a quite a few of these marks in the, in the, in the other video, which I'll put in the link, link below in the description. You'll get a few marks with the 36s to go play on as well. Especially up here over summer and you want to go try and chase a marlin or mahi mahi or something. Go to the 36s, hopefully the water's blue. Okay. Um, next thing, the water colour. Okay, I didn't draw it on a map, but when you look on a big map or Google Earth, you'll notice the Gold Coast here is basically in a bay. You can see I've started going up. All this, this is like we're in a big bay here. And when we get northerly winds over summer, what it does is what we say it does, it rolls the water over. And it's from northerly winds, the water usually rolls over and it goes green and cold. Okay, so the big bay, if we get a lot of northerly, these goes green and cold. It's not like super cold, it's just, you know, cooler. And green. So it sort of slows down the mackerel a little bit. You still get the mackerel in it as long as it's got a bit of warmth to it. The mackerel a little bit will be in. The marlin that don't mind it at all, the little blacks, they're fine, they're in it. But what it does do is pushes like the kinkfi, I mean, pushes a wahoo and the mahi mahi out wider. They go out wider looking for the blue water. So if you want to chase those species, you've got to go out wider to the blue water. And sometimes you've got to go right out to the 50s, which is nearly a 60k run depending on where you're going to find them. So it's a bit of a run, so you want a decent boat and a good tank. Okay, because that can be a real pain in the ass over over summer is northerly wind we get a lot of northerlies but what people don't realize is just because it's summer they keep on chasing pelagics but when we get a lot of northerlies and the water's cold and green there's jewies around here there's snapper on these reefs they're still there they haven't gone anywhere people just forget about them because they're in mackerel mode so don't forget about chasing jews and snapper over over summer they're still there if we get a lot of northerlies and the water's cold and green drops off and if you start, if you're fishing for these fish and you keep on getting bitten off or, you know, the mackerel are in the area, you get a mackerel as a bycatch. Win-win. It's great. Okay. Um, like we just had it in the last few days, we had a big southerly blow. So south wind is good. Once again, it comes from the other way. What that does is roll the water over, basically in reverse. And the water will be nice and blue and the temperature goes up. And when we get big southerly buses over summer, which is great because it turns the water blue, cleans the water up, it goes warmer. The mackerel come on, uh, you can get the mahi mahi and the wahoo and the marlin, they all come in close, feeding on the bait grounds and fishing is just awesome. It is absolutely awesome. So always pray for a big southerly buster because that really does help us out, especially over summer. It rolls the water over, makes it nice and clean. Uh, what we've got, easterly winds, which you get over winter and sometimes in summer. All that basically does is just make it choppy and uncomfortable to fish. But it's not bad fishing. The fish still bite. I don't see much difference in the temperature. Just makes it a bit more juggly as you're trying to fish. That's all it does. And westerly over winters, well, like winter we get here is westerlies. Westerlies are awesome offshore. So there's bug, when you get good westerly, there's bugger all surf, the tailor are running out, running along the beaches chasing tailor. If it's a howling westerly, you can get out to these wrecks or even the blocks, these close reefs, and just sit out there and chase jewel and uh, snapper, cobia while the whales are there in a howling westerly because it's really close to the shore, so you're safe here. You can't go out wide because it's rough as gas, but in close, it's, and the water's usually a beautiful blue in a westerly, and clean, cold, and great time to chase jews and cobes, and snapper. Um, what else we got here? The other thing you saw I got asked is fads. People from down south didn't write, I don't think they, know, they don't know what fads are. So fad stands for fish attracting device. And the government puts them out. They're actually, there's one down here is just in the 24s. Don't ask me the GPS marks. I don't know because I don't fish them personally. Um, and there's one here in the 36s north. And there's a couple out in the 50s. And some people put their own out. But they stand for fish attracting device. And they're big yellow markers, big yellow boys. And they attract bait fish, obviously. And when the bait fish is there, they attract dolphin fish. So all year round, even over winter, under fads out wider, you will find dolphin fish. A lot of the time they're only small fish, but at times you do get some rather large ones there. And drifting past, casting lures, unweighted pilchards, um, throwing live baits at them is not a bad way to find yourself a feeder mahi-mahi. Okay? Because where you find a fad, you'll find bait fish, and generally there's um, pelagics and you know bigger fish around the baits. 
And you also get a lot of marlin over random over summer. So marlin would be in there eating the bait fish as well, even the small dolphin fish. So not a bad spot to trawl for a marlin as well. And wahoo. Uh, so fads, fish attracting device. You'll probably have to go to your local tackle shops and ask to see if anyone's got the marks for the exact gov government ones. I don't, sorry. Like I said, I don't really chase them. Occasionally I'll come across them when I'm trawling out wide and I'll just trawl past. Um, but a good spot to get a feed if you're desperate for a feed of dolphin fish. Usually you can find a couple of small ones for a bit of fun and a feed on the way home or whatever. Um, hopefully this has helped, helped you guys out understand the reefs and where they are. Um, I've only basically, as you saw, just done the seaway here, mostly off the seaway and the pin bar. Like this is off the pin bar, we've got a reef called the Sully's, that's the 24s as well. So basically, like I said, it's broken ground all the way down. Uh, a couple of wrecks for you to go try on, catch some baits and fads. And the reefs, remember, north to south, um, they are broken ground. If you're not sure on what you're to look for on your sounder or where to anchor on them, I will put in another link to a video I done not, not long ago and where, what to look for on your sounder and how to anchor on the reefs for your best results. I'll put a link to that video down below as well. So you can watch that and you'll get an idea what I'm talking about, what to look for on your sounder for these reefs. Because you're not going to go out there looking for big, you know, two metre, five metre, ten metre drop-offs, you know, pinnacles. and It just doesn't really exist off here. The ground's fairly small, just hard, rocky, a few little lumps and bumps. But once you understand how to read your sounder, what to look for and what to look, how the fish sit on it, you'll actually do quite well. So I'll put a link to that video down below, plus all the GPS marks down below. And apart from that, guys, I hope this helps you out a bit. Um, if you have any other questions and stuff, just ask me in the, in the comments. It's all good. And I hope you get hope the weather clears up for all of us and we get out and catch a few fish over summer. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.